Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So tonight is the night before Halloween and I wanted to do something a little bit different and tell you guys a true story about Robert the Doll from Key West. And I actually went and visited him in the museum that is down there, which is just kind of takes your breath away. It's very chilling when you go and see him. You get this like really heavy, just pressure on your chest. I just can't even describe it. It's nothing like I've ever felt before. Um, everyone, I went and seen him twice actually. Once with just me and my husband, he felt the exact same way. And then the second time, um, it was a huge group of us. We all went down and everyone who went inside just felt like goosebumps. They just felt heavy and just, we all felt, it just is indescribable. It almost takes your breath away when you see him because he's like life size. He's humongous and sits in this big glass case, but there's a huge story behind it. They actually say he's more haunted than Annabelle doll, which you guys all seen like the haunting of Annabelle. They made movies on it. I think that they're actually making a movie on Robert the doll soon. Um, I've actually looked into this so much. I've first heard about him a few years ago, I want to say like five, six years ago, from a girlfriend, Jacqueline Ray. I've done collabs with her before. Um, she told me about him because she got married in Key West and she was like, and you have to go see him. Um, so I heard the stories and I just, some reason it stuck with me. And when I went there, you can also tour like this museum area um, that has a lot of history in it and they say that they get tons and tons of orbs and this was the second time I had went. The first time I didn't get any pictures of orbs or anything like that. Now the second time, like I said, there was a group of us, there's like 10 of us all taking photos. I was standing with me and my girlfriends. We took pictures of the exact same windows at the exact same time. Mine have has orbs in it, hers doesn't. It was crazy. So I am going to basically tell you my experience and also gonna tell you the whole background story because this story goes back to a really, really, really long time ago. I'm gonna read a little bit off of their website as well just so that I don't get any facts messed up as you know. Also to remember, this dates back to the 1900s, so super, super long ago when they had servants. That's what I'm gonna say instead of slaves, just because I don't like that word, it makes me feel sad. Well, basically, a young man named Eugene Otto, they called him Jean back then, he was given a doll by one of his servants that worked for his family, and the servant actually handmade it, so when you see him, that's why it looks so, so old. He quickly became like super, super close to this doll. Um, actually, the house that he grew up on, if you go and see Robert the doll, they do a huge tour. You can go and see the house. The house is beautiful. All the houses down there are so pretty. So at first, the doll seemed totally normal, like nothing was wrong. Um, and then like some really strange things started happening that the mom started noticing. Um, kind of take place and the son Jean's attitude and personality to kind of start taking a shift. One of the moments that's documented is that he woke up Jean around 10 years old to Robert the doll sitting at the end of his bed and he started crying and like got like um, really upset and his mom was like oh no you're fine whatever go back to bed. Then another night and this is like huge in the story that they tell you if you go visit them um, the mother woke up to her son, Jean, screaming and crying, yelling for help, and she could hear like bang, bang, bangs, and like thumping and vibrations. And um, the, when she went to try to get in, the door was locked. She could not get in, it was locked tight. And she actually ended up using a wrench to be able to get in, and when she got in, everything was thrown around, smashed around and Jean was curled up in his bed, like shivering as a 10 year old would be. I mean, I would be shivering and probably pee myself. And um, Robert the doll was sitting at the edge of the bed and she said that, or, and he said that Robert the doll did it all. And you'll see like later in the story, it becomes really repetitive as to when things happen, that's basically what would be the reasoning for it would be Robert did it. So at first they were kind of not too sure if that was true. Um, you know, they thought maybe his son is just, you know, seeking attention, whatever. 
And then they started to hear voices of Gene talking to someone up in his bedroom when he was playing. At first they kind of thought it was like an imaginary friend. And then they would start hearing somebody talking back to him. And it was always in a different voice, like a different sound or tone of the other person's voice. So that's when, you know, obviously they started getting really scared because they didn't have TVs back then or radios really or anything like that. They also reported that they would see him running up and down the steps. Also said that they saw him looking out the window and that they saw him basically go running by in the hallway, like all very fast, like glimpses, you know? So basically the doll lived with Gene his whole life. He did move when he got married to his wife, Anne, and I believe that the doll came with them. And then when Gene's parents died, Gene moved back to his old family home with his wife, Anne, and then the doll came with them. And that's where he decided like, we're just gonna give him a room of his own. He took the room that was all the way upstairs where the window, where the window was facing the outside street, where again, if you go and check it out, you'll be able to see it all. So Anne, his wife, didn't love the fact that he was in the home and she wanted him to lock him in the attic. So Jean agreed to put him in the attic and I'm assuming that the doll did that he did not like being in the attic. They would start hearing like really evil giggling and screams and footsteps and pounding. Mm. Now every time my house creaks, that's exactly what I think of. And actually neighbors, like kids who lived around, said that they saw him looking outside of the window when they would walk to school. <sighs> so basically Gene was like, there's no way he could be looking out that window that was his room. I locked him in the attic. And when he heard these counts of the school children said they saw him, um, and Anne saying that they saw him, he would go look and find him in his rocking chair in his old bedroom. So this happened a few times. He would put him back in the attic and then, you know, he would hear that people would say they would see him, blah, blah, blah. Or he'd hear like, um, they, him and his wife would hear rocking and in the rocking chair and stuff every single time that he would check the attic and he wouldn't be there. He would be back in his room in the rocking chair facing the window looking outside. So then um, basically what happened, he ended up dying in 1974 and the house got sold and new owners moved in. They had a 10 year old daughter and then the daughter found the doll in the attic. So she was super excited because again, the doll was like life size. It's like one of those Barbie dolls that are like humongous. Um, and so she got excited and would play with it. Um, and then one day she came to her parents and were crying that the doll's alive and that he wanted to hurt her. I couldn't even imagine, oh my gosh, if that happened. That makes me never want to move. She would cry and apparently wake up every single night in the middle of the night and say that Robert the doll would move around her room. And then they ended up giving him away and now he lives in the museum in Key West. So the reason that they believe that the doll is possessed is because they believe that the servant who made the doll was mistreated by her bosses and that she basically made that doll as like a voodoo doll and placed black magic on it to basically harm them. When you visit him, he's said to still haunt and taunt people that go and visit him. Um, so basically he has a huge set of rules. You have to say hello to him. You have to say, hello, Robert the doll, how are you? you if you wanna take a picture, you have to say, may I please take your picture? Um, you can't make fun of him, anything like that. And when you leave, you have to make sure that you say goodbye to him. He sits in a glass case and actually people who have worked there had ended up leaving instantly, like without a trace because they said they would be cleaning like in the middle of the night and they would hear something or something would happen. Um, and they were just like done. They were just terrified. People, workers have said that they have seen him put his hand up to the glass. They've heard like really evil giggling. They have said that um, his, the way he sits in there has changed. Like he has moved many times. And then something else that's like really scary is that when you walk into the area where he is, there's just notes like all over the door, um, like the wind, not the windows, all over the walls and everything of people saying sorry because they didn't ask to take a picture. They didn't say hello and greet him or say goodbye. And basically when they leave, like 
something bad happens, either their car breaks down, they end up getting a divorce, like their house catches on fire, um, just like really horrible things end up happening. Um, and they believe that it's all because they didn't say hello or do the rules that you're supposed to do. I made sure I did every single thing because I was not about that life. Um, so that's something else that he's known for. If you don't follow and obey his rules, he will make sure that something bad will go terribly wrong. There's actually a, there's also a birthday. I think it was only his 100th birthday. I believe George Bush senior, maybe junior, I'm not sure. He written like a huge happy birthday letter that they have placed in there. So that's pretty crazy that the president has a letter in there. Um, that kind of just goes to show like, definitely it's real. I mean, for me, I believe in that wholeheartedly. That's just, so that basically wraps up his story. It's, I don't know why a lot of the spooky stories and stuff don't always get to me a whole bunch. This one just always like tugged at me. Even when I look at his picture, I just get like the chills. It freaks me out. So if you guys end up going to Key West, I definitely recommend you stopping by and seeing him. Make sure you follow the rules though. Um, and I hope you guys all have a beautiful, wonderful Halloween, my favorite. I hope you guys like stories like this. If you do, let me know. Maybe I'll kind of add this into my YouTube thing. Not that I'm getting bored of makeup. I'm not. It's just so repetitive. You know what I mean? So I kind of just want to switch it up and have a little bit more fun. So I love you guys and I'll see you soon.